Okay, next we have Ganeshwar Chobe. He's a molecular anthropologist at Banaras Hindu University in India and a National Geographic grantee. His work has been instrumental in understanding the migration patterns of the peopling of South Asia. Please welcome Ganeshwar. A very good morning and namaste to all of you. So in 2005, when we started working with the Andaman Islanders and we chalked out the out of Africa migration, we thought that this is it. This is the final way to show that this is the real out of Africa migration. But as Lee said that with the movement of the time and within the last decade, in 2015, with the help of several explorers from National Geographic as well as several other scientists, we could now see that the origin of human as well as the migration of human is much more complex than, than we were thought. So here we see that there are not just a single migration out of Africa which has happened. There is another migration shown in red color here, which has happened in last 100 to 120,000 years back. And it has traces into Papua New Guinea as well as some other old world population. So the technology driven uh, movement in the human migration has helped us to understand more and more to the, uh, to the understanding that who we are. And for the, on the left side of the picture, we see that there is a timeline of the human migration, which also shows that not only we moved from one place to another place, we also admixed with the so far known two hominin, that is uh, the Neanderthal and Denisovans. So by using the, 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 the technological advancement, we can also try to look that what are the different models and try to fit that what models fits with the recent migration as well as the recent admixture. So in this case, we compare demic diffusion and cultural diffusions. So demic diffusion is the diffusion where when one population moves to territory of another population and when two population admix, these population usually share the genes as well as languages. But in cultural diffusion, when two population interact together, there is only change of the language of second population, but it does not change any genes into them. So we have a case study here of a population called Mushahar, which is present into India, mostly into the central and eastern part of India. The Mushahar is the local name and the local meaning of the Mushar is rat eaters. So these population, they are the one who usually found into the territory where Indo-European speakers are present. So they interact with them, they share the, the food and several other things with them, the, the cultural things. But when we look their DNA, we found out that surprisingly, they share their DNA, which is a from a completely different population called Austroasiatics. And these Austroasiatic population, they live around 1,000 to 1,500 kilometers away from them. So the population which is living with a population sharing the language and sharing several other things does not have any relation with the population who lives in the surrounding. I was curious about them because I, in the childhood I played cricket with them. But because they look different from us, and when I used to go to their homes, some of their elders, they speak two different languages. So the genetic profile of them, on the left side, we see that the Austroasiatic speakers, who live more than 1,000 kilometers away from them, they share much more closer genetic common ancestry comparing to the right side where the Indo-European local population exists. It's the same, same uh, results we get for maternal ancestry as well as paternal ancestry. So here we see that because of the help of technological advancement, we could also uh, get the information on the very finer scale, and that helps us to understand who we are. Thank you very much for your understanding.